Hello, and welcome to our channel. A special welcome to all our subscribers, thank you for being here. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell, so you're always up to date with our latest videos. Before we see the video on how to create a BOM in D365 let us see first the features that make him a powerful tool. BOM's features provide powerful tools for managing production and planning processes. For starters, version control allows manufacturers to seamlessly phase out outdated components by maintaining multiple versions of a BOM with different effective dates. This ensures smooth transitions and adaptability to changing production needs. Additionally, SubBOM control offers flexibility by allowing SubBOMs to be handled independently or alongside the parent production, catering to diverse planning and sales scenarios. To enhance efficiency, subcontractor support simplifies outsourcing by automatically generating purchase orders for external vendors during master planning. Production processes can also adapt dynamically with quantity-dependent BOMs, which enable manufacturers to select specific BOM versions based on order size. For example, a smaller order might use one version, while a larger one switches to another. The system also supports multi-site production, where components of a product can be produced at different sites. By organizing production levels within the BOM structure and defining site-specific routes, businesses can maximize resource utilization across locations. Lastly, Phantom BOMs introduce a streamlined approach to production by pulling inventory only when required. This feature is especially valuable in engineering, reducing complexity while maintaining flexibility. It's recommended to avoid deep hierarchies of phantoms in repetitive manufacturing to improve system performance. Pre-exploded BOMs and routes offer a more efficient alternative for complex setups. Together, these features make BOMs a cornerstone for efficient and adaptive manufacturing operations. Let us see in this video how to create a BOM as well as how to create different versions of the BOM. Thanks. In this video, you will see how to create a bill of material in Dynamics 365. We're starting from the main dashboard and I'm gonna to navigate to the navigation pane and open up the product and information management module. I'll go to bills of materials and formulas and select bills of materials. On this page, you'll see a list of all of the bills and materials that are created in the application for this company. You'll click new in the action pane to create the new bill of material and we'll want to identify the new bomb. Next, I'll select the site I'm creating this bill of material for. Then I'll assign the item group. This will define main accounts we are posting to for different types of transactions. Now I'll set up the Bill of Material Lines. I'll click New in the Bill of Material Lines Fast tab and specify the first item number for the bomb. Now you can specify a specific variant by selecting Configuration, Size, Color, or Style if this item number is set up as a product master. I'll scroll over on the line and we can see the warehouse that has been defined based off of the item default. We can then enter the quantity for this line and define additional information. Here in the per series field, you can enter the number of units which this quantity applies for. We'll say for one of this line. You can then select the configuration group if applicable and we can see the type of line this is. Here in item type, we can hover over the icon and see that this is an item type of item. This is defined when the item is set up. You can continue to enter additional lines for this bill of material by clicking new in the bomb lines fast tab. I have added two additional lines to this bomb. If I scroll over, we can see the details, the quantity per series and additional information. You can select each line of the bill of material and view the line details. Here I can specify additional information, like if I'm using sub routes, a specific vendor account and subcontracting, I can also specify a valid period. You can specify the from and to date to say that this line is only valid between a specific date. 
On the Setup tab, you can see that we have the quantity and per series specified. This is coming from the line. We can also set up things like constant and variable scrap. So for instance, if you have constant scrap at the line level and it needs to be calculated as such, you can enter your constant scrap here in the constant scrap field. This scrap is used to calculate the adjusted consumption of the raw material on the bomb lines. You can also enter your variable scrap at the line level as well. Here you might enter something like 10% for this line. This scrap is used to calculate corrected usage of raw material on the bomb lines. In addition, you can specify the type of rounding up you're using and enter specific measurements if this line requires specific height, width, depth, density, or constants. I'll scroll up to the top of the page and select header. Here I can specify the bomb versions for this bill of material. I would use a bomb version, for example, if I need to set up a bill of material for a product variant that is going to be produced. What's nice about using these bomb versions is you can set up these versions to have a specific valid period, specific quantity, site, or dimensions. So here under bomb versions, I can specify the item number, and then I can scroll over, specify the product variant, and I can also specify the valid from and to date. So I could say that this is valid from the first of the year to the end of the year. I can say that I'm creating a specific version for a specific quantity, so I can have a from quantity of 500. Then I might have another bill of material that we use for a different quantity. Last, we'll need to ensure to activate both the bomb version and the bill of material. You can see on the bomb version fast tab that this is not active, nor has it been approved. So we'll go ahead and do this by clicking approval in the bomb versions fast tab. I'll select who this has been approved by. I can also say I want to go ahead and approve the bill of materials at the same time so I don't have to do this twice. I'll say yes and click OK. I'll then need to make this active. I'll select activate and we can see that the active check mark is now checked and this bill of material version can be used. I'll now switch over to the line view and I can see that this bill of material has been approved. This bill of material is now ready to be used. 